Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. If you guys hear my voice, and yeah, you see our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ back there, tell them, let's come inside. It is time to start to begin together to continue to celebrate the resurrecting, Resurrection King. Amen? Amen. Now, when a fellow believer says, He is risen, what are you guys supposed to say? He is risen indeed. That's right. If you guys are new to the Christian world, uh, these are some of the things that we uh, that we say but to celebrate that Jesus has risen again. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite my brother Joe to come on the stage and he's going to open us up in prayer as we celebrate Jesus. Let's pray together. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let's all stand up so that we can receive our blessing. Let's bow our head. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for brought us here safely. And those who are on the way, Lord, give the troubling mercy, Lord Jesus. And those who are on the bed, reach in with your healing hand and your love. Bless us, O Lord. Bless our church. And bless us, Pastor. And his family, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you again. We ask all this thing in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Yes, He is risen. He is risen. Let's try that one more time. Because He is risen. He is risen indeed. We praise the God who is alive. Amen. Let's praise Him.
standing. Or to kneel, the altar is open. Again, the altar is not a sign of weakness per se, but it's a sign of coming to God and saying, God, I surrender this unto you. And again, you're not more holier if you come to the altar, but it is a beautiful place to come and surrender things to the Lord. Things of desperation. Amen. Praying for someone in their stead. Praying for healing. Man, let's pray for our city, Vallejo. Yes? Pastor Roy, thank you. Good morning, church. He is risen. Yes. I would like also to thank you, church, for praying. Our son, Roy Daniel, is coming home. May, mid of May. May the name of the Lord be praised as he finish his mission outside the country. Let's pray. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to thee, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts, humbling ourselves, Lord, to you. Yes, Lord, just like the song that we just had, you are the living hope that we have. You're alive. The power of sin. No more. Because you are alive with us. Lord, continue to be with us, Lord. So that the power of Satan will not endure us. But you, Lord, you are the one who will lead us. This Lord. Forgive us, O Lord, the iniquities that we have just done. And bring us the salvation. The joy of salvation. Lord, please, grant us. So we could continue to serve you, to praise you, to honor you, to worship you. In spirit and in truth. Lord, without you, we can't do this. We need you, Lord, in our life. Guide us, Lord. Protect us. You promise us, Lord. Whatever we will ask in your name, you will grant thee in accordance to your will. Lord, at this time, we are offering to you our petition, our prayers, whatever it is. Answer it in accordance to your will. We believe on that, Lord, and we claim that because we are asking this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords. The King of Kings, our Savior, our Redeemer, Lord, at this time, we are praying each one of us, from the youngest to the oldest in this group, not only in this group, but all over the world, who are praying with you, asking you to bless us so we can be a blessing to others. That's what you want, Lord. To be a channel of your blessings. But we cannot do this, Lord, without blessing us. So we ask your blessing, Lord, to each one of us. To be your channel of blessings. Not only today, but forever and ever. Bless our pastor as he delivered the message for today. His family. And it's one of us in this group. Thank you for the life of the praise and worship team. Bless the Lord as we continue to be your channel of blessings, as prepare us to prepare us to worship you in this place. 
It's one of us, Lord. <laughs> May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Roy, the worship team. Everybody say Christ. Christ. Everybody say church. church. Community. We are so thankful for the new banners to the women's ministry, especially the uh, Derek and Donna, for our new banner. Just give them a round of applause. Um, and I found out the previous banners uh, was put up back in 2013 in honor of uh, the retirement of our previous worship leader, Pastor Riola. And so I know they join us online. Just know that we will be keeping those banners uh, sacred, and uh, we will rotate those banners every once in a while. And so we just want to remember that and honor uh, the previous banners. But we are so excited. We want to show you this quick video that Josh is going to put up, uh, just a representation of what these three words mean in terms of the core of who we are at Vallejo New Life. Thank you. done in and through us. Amen. Amen. And uh, well, first of all, if you are new here to our church, uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Tim Cruz and I'm the lead pastor here. Uh, can you believe it? Come August, it'll be two years already as a uh, senior pastor here in Vallejo. Praise God. Not too much excitement. All right, let's go. That's okay. Uh, praise the Lord. But hey, listen, we've got a new shipment of food boxes back there in the kitchen and you saw it over there. Um, about 75 or so boxes. Uh, so again, crucial stuff in there. Canned meats, sp spaghetti, rice, and, and uh, other great things. So make sure, feel free to grab a box, take it home, and uh, pray on who you can continue to uh, bless in the community in terms of where you work, uh, where you go to school, in your neighborhood, and let us continue to share the love of God by simply giving food. Amen? Amen. Uh, we uh, postponed the rummage sale. We are attempting to uh, get 14 of our youth to San Diego, elevate uh, during Memorial Day next month. And the cost, the cost to rent a uh, rental car, 15 passenger van, is about 1,500. And uh, we're attempting to raise that. 
And just know because of the rains yesterday, we postponed our rummage sale to May 7th. Uh, so just want to let you know that we'll be communicating to you online in terms of uh, bringing the goods and supporting. And uh, anything else I need to know about that? Dollar, we're good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Praise the Lord. Easter egg hunt right after the service. Uh, and uh, for the kids, and so we're excited about that. So as soon as we're done with the service, we're going to have an egg hunt, and we're going to continue to love our and our children. Amen? Amen. At this time, we want to invite Emil to come, and he is going to pray and lead us in terms of the tithes and offerings. Uh, if you are joining us online, and, and for any of you, thank you so much to uh, all of you who continue to give, nlcvallejo.org, and as Emil leads us in, term, in terms of the tithes and offerings. We're excited to have Donna come and bless us in a musical number. Amen. Thank you, watchers. Okay, thank you. Before I do that, uh, I want to emphasize the importance of this day, Resurrection Day. Apostle Paul was saying, but if there was no resurrection, their preaching, what they are saying, they were saying, were useless. Because if there was no resurrection and Christ did not rise from the dead, we are still dead in sin, is what he shall say. And uh, <clears throat> the Lord Jesus said when Lazarus died and he was he went there verse 25 of John 11 I am the resurrection and the life anyone who believes in me will live even after dying everyone who lives in who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die this is, these are the words of the Lord. They will never, ever die. So, <clears throat> today I am part of my testimony is, I believe, I believe that if my physical body I die it's because I'm, I think I'm the oldest in this congregation. I'm 76 years I'm in the departure area <laughs> already. So I'm sure because of, I believe in him, I'm sure that I will go with him when I die. Amen. That's my assurance, my blessed assurance. Because Jesus is mine. Amen. Amen. I don't know. I before I pray for our Thanksgiving, I don't, I don't know if anyone wants to say a statement or two about what Jesus has done for you. What is resurrection to you? Anybody? Oh, wants I will. I'm just. I don't know. I'm just full of Holy Spirit. Bear with me. Amen. Full of praise to God who brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light that I may declare his praises for all time. Praise God. And Amen. my name is Christina. I bring a aloha to Pastor. I know him from Maui. And good to see you. <laughs> but I just can't sing enough. Say enough what Jesus has done for me. Amen. There is nothing old, nothing stale. He's new. He's with me every moment. Amen. The promise of lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world praise stands. God. I have no fear. I can pray without pray, fear pray. and with power for Ukraine. I can pray for our disasters, our people, our situations. I can be a force in his name. Amen. Do 
Amen. Jesus. And I'm delivered. My God has brought me out of so many things. You sat my feet on a solid rock. I thank you for this. You wanted to be people this opportunity to be here. I worked a night shift over at Martina's Hospital, and I am just full of strength because I wanted to come here today. And Jesus said, go. Amen. I just want to say Amen. thank you. Praise God. I love you all. You know, I don't know Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Somebody else wants to. I know the devil don't want you to speak, and he's, he's trying to cover your mouth. But uh, yeah. I, that's why I'm, I want anybody who wants to praise the Lord today. This is resurrection day. The center part of our faith. Amen. Yes. The core of our faith. Amen. He is risen. Amen. Nobody else? Okay. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we could uh, say our prayers to you in thanksgiving and in opening. All what we have, Lord, belongs to you. We have nothing, but you supplied our needs, Lord. You supplied, you gave our life, our livelihood, and everything in this earth, Lord. We can not name anything that comes from us, but all kind came from you, all kind. Bless our offering. Let our offering come all come from our heart. No compulsion. Out of thanksgiving. We pray this Lord. The sources of this our life and all of this we pray in your name.
John chapter 19 will appear on the screen. You know, my family, uh, when we go hiking, when we're in the city, when we're walking in town, my family, uh, they're, they're oblivious to any kind of danger. Here's what I mean. When we're walking, whether we're at Glen Cove hiking, again, whether we're, we're walking in Venetia, I like this, you know, they're walking, they're having a great time. When I'm walking with them, I'm like this guardian. I, I'm, I'm making sure that they're safe. Uh, I'm making sure there's no snakes around them. Whatever it is, zombies, whatever it is, right? I'm just so protective over my family when we walk. Uh, and I'm just like making sure they're okay. I'm, I'm looking ahead if there's danger ahead. That's just kind of way I need to lighten up. I need to lighten up, I know. But that's just the way I am in terms of my family. I remember when uh, Cameron and Caden were very young and we were playing in a playground and Cameron comes up to me and says, Daddy, Daddy, there's this, this, this girl, she's bullying us. And I can just, I can just feel my claws coming out like Wolverine out of my hands, right? I just felt my just body on fire. I was so angry. I'm a pastor, I, I understand that. But I was just so upset. I needed to go see this person. And my camera was like, she, she, she kind of knows daddy at times. No, daddy, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But that's the way I am as a father, as a protective father. I don't want harm, any kind of harm. Name calling, pain, hitting, abuse upon my kids. And any healthy parent would feel that way. Would you agree? Yes. I cannot imagine watching my child on a Roman cross being brutally beaten and bloodied and mocked and ridiculed. And here is Mary. At the scene of the cross, son being put up on there. And this is what is said here in the scriptures, John 19. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The next scripture, you get it one more time. I don't know if, uh, I'm sure she was, I'm sure she was, that she knew the Old Testament scriptures in terms of the future of her son. And I'm not sure if she, uh, she knew it and maybe she kind of just swept it under the rug, she, she, she buried it, uh, but she must have known what her son was going to grow into, who he will become, that her son will not grow up to be a doctor or a lawyer. Her son will not bear her grandkids. Not carry on the family name. Right? But as she knows the word, and she's witnessing her son brutally dying on that cross, she's realizing that what is happening on that cross was predicted so long ago that this is the future outcome of Jesus. Her baby boy. Yes? He is naked and there's no one to warm him. He is thirsty and there's no one to give him any water. He is tired. And she just feels so helpless. There's no one to comfort him. That's what's going on at the cross. Can you imagine losing baby God? If you remember the scripture, just hit it one more time. Hit it one more time. She lost God at, the, at a young age, at 12, 13. 
She was panicking. She was in the marketplace, and all of a sudden, have you ever lost your child? I have, right? And the panic, we were, were we? Uh, Legoland. I thought he was with you. I thought you had him, Caden, right? And Sky and I are panicking. Where is our son? We're thinking about all the worst things that could have happened to Caden. And we're running around, walking around, and there he is on that big water drop ride all by himself with a huge smile. He went on a ride by himself, right? Not the greatest parents. She lost baby God for a, for a, for a, for a while. And finally finds him. And she, if you remember the story, she's panicking. Where'd you go? What are you doing? And what does he say? Little Jesus here, didn't you realize that I should be involved with my father's business? Part of Mary, in terms of her humanness and her matriarchy, her motherhood, is like, no, you don't tell me that, right? You better tell me what, where you're supposed to be. You need to, you need to be responsible. But on the one hand, she's realizing that the son that she has is more than human. And she's realizing, maybe, just maybe on the cross, that he is about the Father's business. Amen? Amen. He is about the Father's business. A mother's love, that's why she's there at the cross. <coughs> right? A Savior's love. That's why he chooses to remain on that cross. Amen? Amen? It is so difficult for her to bear. How can she endure it? And she's able to endure this time because of this certain man that's, that's present there. Hit it one more time. Again, big old guy. All the other disciples scattered. John's the only one remaining there. All the other disciples are gone. And they're probably arm to arm. And I can't imagine the pain, right? Some of you have, have seen the, 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 the Passion of Christ, the, the Mel Gibson uh, movie, which attempts to describe what he, it, what he went through, enduring the pain and the suffering. I guarantee you there was so much he wanted to say to his mother. So much things unsaid. Maybe you wanted to say, you know what, you've been the greatest mom. There's so many things I want to tell you. But maybe the pain is too much to bear. And all he's all it says is he saw. You saw that? Verse 26. When Jesus saw his mother. And all he can get out was, look. Here's your son, Mom. Here's your mother, John. And it says here, from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. That's all he could say. That's all he could mutter. Because he was about the Father's business. Amen? Amen. First thing that struck out to me is this. Number one. You can hear it one more time. There were certain groups and certain people during that time. And the first group that stood out to me was the soldiers. The soldiers were there, the Roman soldiers. History tells us up to this point of the crucifixion of Jesus, the Romans had already crucified 30,000 people up to that point. So they brutally killed thieves, murderers. That was the punishment, the Roman cross. Right? So I don't know how they figured this out, but up to this point, already 30,000 people have died in and around Judea. This was a familiar thing. Up to back this day is the creator and the savior of the world. And maybe to most people, it's like, oh, here's another show, here's another crucifixion, it's just another. 
And maybe this crucifixion thing to them, it became so numb, so familiar. And these Roman soldiers, they missed out on the creator of the world. They went about their own business as usual, and they missed out on Jesus. Yes? Some Christians can come to church and miss out on Jesus. Let me say that again. Some Christians can come to a Christian event or whatever it is and miss out that Jesus is the central of it all, that he is central, that he is the reason why. He's the reason why I saw the women back there stuffing eggs. Was it for pure enjoyment? Yes, maybe it's for the kids to have some joy afterwards, but the core of doing that is to praise God, right? Amen. When we give out the food boxes, it's not just to bless people and to feel good about ourselves, but it's to draw people to Jesus. Amen? Yeah. The reason why we built that basketball court is not just for us to have fun and play basketball, because that is a tool to draw people to Jesus. Amen? Amen. The reason why we strive to beautify this place is, yes, to be good stewards of what God has given us, but also to draw people to Jesus. One, hit it one more time. A guy named Francis Chan, popular speaker, preacher. Um, one day, uh, a church member came and visited the church and he said, Well, Pastor, I didn't really like worship today. And he responded, That's okay, we weren't worshiping you. <laughs> That's okay, we weren't worshiping you. He wasn't mean about it, but you get the core of what he was trying to say. Sometimes we come to church and we get so frustrated. Music was too loud. Or that music song, that they sang that in the 1700s. Why do we sing that now? And it's like, come on. <coughs> and there's been churches that have split because of music. It's just frustrating. And yes, we're going to try to balance hymns and tradition and rap worship. I don't know. But, <laughs> but sometimes we miss Jesus when we come together. As Emil said, that the enemy and the devil will try to do anything to get our focus away from honoring Jesus. Amen? Amen. I was drawn to Jesus at a Christian metal concert. Is that such a thing? Yes. Right? What year it was? 1992. I was invited to this concert. The music probably to most of you would scare you, right? <laughs> but here, I'm in this mosh pit, and I'm just going crazy. I'm like, what is this music, right? The difference between a Christian mosh pit is that when you get knocked down, Christians will help you out. <laughs> hey, brother, how you doing? Praise God, all right? <laughs> I've been to other mosh pits, right? But... How can God use that tool to draw me in, to discover God? And the people there allowed me to see Jesus. But here's the other thing, too. Let me hit it one more time. A guy named David Platt. If you can't read this, let me read it to you. He said, look, what if we take away the cool music and the cushion chairs? What if the screens are gone and the stage is no longer decorated? What if the air conditioning is off and the comforts are removed? Would his word still be enough for his people to come together? Yes. That is the obvious answer. Yes. yes. Now we use these tools, right? But if it was all stripped away, would Jesus be enough? You know, some of us churches, uh, if there's a Christian event, if there's a Christian event in Vallejo, a lot of times we'll say, well, 
Um, I'll only go, who's the speaker? Right? Or, or who's the worship team? It, it, worship team. It better be Hillsong or something like that, a big worship team, or I'm not going. It better be really good. And I remember uh, reading a book and uh, these Christians from India, and they, in the book it said, you know what, we're just excited to come if we're just going to simply just pray together. May we not miss out on Jesus. Amen? And why say love? Okay. Also reminded about the word love here one more time. If you can hit it. Number two, obviously Jesus was there and I'm reminded how he loves. We are to love like Jesus. We've talked about the, the five love languages, right? We talked about... Uh, the way that the Greeks word, uh, use the word love. Because we say, we use that word love like we love our hamburger. I love this hamburger. And we turn to our spouse and I love you, right? <laughs> and we use that word in the broad spectrum. I love this song, right? And the Greeks break it down. We've talked about that many times. You guys know phileo love, the city, the city of brotherly love, right? The way that we love a brother or sister, or a close friend. Eros love. It's that romantic butterfly type feeling type of love. That the Greeks have defined it. And broken down that word even still. Eros love. Right? Think of that little you know, love butterfly. You know. Whoever that person is. Agape love. That self-sacrificing love. Go the extra mile. Take a bullet for you. Type of love. So we've, we've been defined in terms of the love. But I, I saw this also one more time. Chris tells, I wonder why Jesus wasn't offended with all the rejection and the mockery he received from people, considering that he was totally human, not numb, nor pain-proof. He came up with this. Then I realized it was because he was not so full of himself. He was only so full of love. Amen. What does the Bible say? How does it define God? God is what? Amen. Love. Very definition of God that the Bible claims is love. I can't imagine being that powerful and let something that small allow to beat down on me. And having that type of Thor, Superman, Green Lantern type power, right? And more, and allowing something so small to just wail on you and hurt you and beat you down. He was so full of love. What was he doing? He was begging his father. What was he begging him? Send down the angelic army right now, let's get him? Is that, was that what he was saying? He kept saying and begging, he's like, Abba, Abba, forgive them, forgive them, for they have no idea what they're doing. They're clueless, right? Don't wipe them up. Wipe them out. <clears throat> and he's begging his heavenly Father, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. If that was me, I would say, go get them, go get them, go get them, right? <laughs> one more time, one more time. What does it say? I saw, I wrote, the, these are my own notes of, of, a, of a preacher who said this, if a person killed my son and was sentenced to death and let the law take its course, that's justice. Everyone say justice. justice. If I plead my son, my son's killer's life to be spared, that's mercy. Everyone say mercy. mercy. Right? It's withholding, mercy is withholding the punishment that the person deserves. Right? But if I took my son's killer out of prison and took him home with me, adopted him as my own son, and gave him all the love, privileges, and inheritance I'd give my own son, that's grace. It won't say grace. Grace. It's what God has bestowed on us. Amen. Yes? Mercy, withholding the smackdown that we deserve. Grace is giving us Something that we absolutely do not deserve. Amen? Amen. 
And I love this. One more time. Hit it one more time for me. What impressed that centurion that, that witnessed the whole thing, right? John was there. Mary was there. Jesus' haters were there. The centurion was there. What did he say? What impressed him so much? Look what he said in Mark 15, 39. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he saw how he died. He said, surely this man was the Son of God. He didn't say, he didn't say, look at how he did all his miraculous things on the cross. That's what, it didn't, that didn't, you know, that didn't impress him. But he said, look, saw how he died. And his character. And he was convinced. Man, he must have been otherworldly to act like that. Amen? Amen. You guys with me? Last thing. I know this reminds me of this. You know that the outside world, one of the ways that they're going to be able to see God is the way that we treat each other. Amen? I mean, look what it says. No one has ever seen God. So here's, the, here's one of the ways he's saying here in, in John. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Amen. So the implication is that if we love one another, people will be drawn to the truth in Jesus. When we mess up, when we hurt each other, that's where we need to allow the grace of God to come in. That the world will see, look, we do mess up, we do hurt each other, but the forgiveness here is just greater than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. One more time. Everybody say John. John. We have the privilege to take care of what is so dear to Jesus. Again, out of the 11 disciples, he's the one that showed up. And John gives him the task of taking care of his mother. Some of us would be like, I don't want that responsibility. I don't want to take care of your mom, right? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> but here, Jesus is trusting John so much. And John, the disciple who... He loves, freely accepts, and he chooses to accept, to take care of what Jesus loves. What are you taking care of that Jesus loves? Who is that people group? Who are the things... In other words, what is your ministry that God has given you to say, look, this is who I love. I love you, obviously, but this is what I'm entrusting in your care. Your children, the people at your work, your pets, I don't know, right? whatever it is that God has given you, a certain ministry, music, a Bible study, yard work. What is it? And God wants to remind you because some of you guys feel like you're failing at it. God wants to tell you this morning, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Like I always say, what do I always say? We have no idea what our faithful response to Jesus can mean for someone's soul. So God is trying to remind you this morning, keep at it. He's also trying to remind you, you can't do it by yourself. You need the help of the body, right? The 
church. You need the miraculous, supernatural power of God to help you love where God has called you to love and serve. But God is reminding you, go for it. Continue it. Last thing. Everybody say Mary. Mary had an amazing life with Jesus. She kind of had an advantage. She was mom for a while, right? And saw every cut and bruises. Mom was there when Jesus got up, had a bad stomach from eating chili. I don't know. You know what I'm saying, right? Mary had an amazing life with Jesus. God is reminding us that we all have that opportunity to have an amazing life with Jesus. Not a life with no problems. That does not mean that you're going to be living in a five-bedroom house in a gated community in Venetia. I don't know, right? It does not mean that. But God is calling us into a life of an adventure. There will be difficulties at times. Hit it one more time. Hit it one more time. Okay. What's that song, Jesus, Take the Wheel, right? Not that wheel, Jesus. Okay. Sometimes, as we all know, we all experience... When you come to the altar and you surrender your life to Jesus, I can't guarantee you that you still won't get cancer. Or your child will still not get killed by a drunk driver. Can't guarantee you any of that. But what I can guarantee you when you surrender your life to Jesus, that you will have peace everlasting. That the, that split second that you die you experience a joy eternally, forever and ever. That the greatest human need is for us to be forgiven of our sins, to be restored with God forever and ever, and enjoy Him all the days of our lives. Amen? Amen. Don't get me wrong, He does give good gifts to His children now. He's a loving Father. What does the Word of God say? say? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. He does bless us in different ways. In certain times. But that does not mean a life without any kind of hostility. Some of you are right here, right now. Or you're right here. You're so close to a situation, you're like, I, you don't understand what's happening. You're right here. You don't know where God, what are you doing, God? You don't understand. And maybe a year out, maybe three years later, maybe five years later, you begin to see what God was doing. But right now, some of you are right here, you're like, what's going on? This is crazy. I don't even, I, I can't understand. I can't read it, God. I can't grasp it. But sometimes later on in your life, you'll look back at that situation and you'll say, God, I didn't see it then, but I know it now, how you were there. Amen? Amen. It's true. We celebrate this day because the life of Jesus did not end on a Roman cross. Yes? The tomb is empty. And I'm reminded by scriptures like this. One more time. You do it one more time. Donna, guys, can come back up. The next time we see Jesus, you're going to see, you're going to see scenes like this. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with the commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the nations of the world will mourn him. Yes, amen, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. 
And when I read descriptions like this last part, because sometimes when I think about Jesus, I think about baby Jesus, Jesus dying on the cross, Jesus washing feet. I don't, sometimes I'm, I'm reminded that this is Jesus also. I saw someone like the Son of Man, servant of man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like a mighty ocean waves. This is our God. Amen? He died on the cross. The tomb is empty. He rose again. And he's coming again. And the next time we see him, we're going to see him in all of his glory. And what a glorious day that will be. That's why we instill within our kids songs about the joy of God. Because this day is going to be a glorious day. Amen. <sighs> Come, guys, and as they, as they come up, I want to pray. We're going to close with the worship team first, or we're going to get the kids up here. Let's get the kids up here, man. Let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray. God, thank you for who you are. You could have been any kind of God, but you are a good God. You are the God of love. You invented love. I pray, Father, that anyone in this room who just feels just so far gone, rebellious, unworthy, shame of any kind, I pray, Father, that we will rebuke that in Jesus' name. That everyone, including myself, will feel restoration and peace and joy. Not because we don't deserve any of it, but you freely give it, you offer it, Father. And so we just say we receive it. So I pray, Father, that anyone that feels unworthy, that your spirit will just fill them, that you'll speak love. Father, we know your words are piercing also, Father. You hold us accountable. You, you, you call us to a higher standard of living. And thank you that when we fail that, that there's Jesus. We continue to just cast our worries unto you. Some of us are just so overwhelmed with certain things, relationship issues, news recently from the doctor that we didn't want to hear, lack of money, whatever it is, Father. May we allow you to be God in every situation. love you, we belong to you, you have risen in deep, you get all the glory, today and forever and ever. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We are certainly not done. We are going to uh, receive the kids, they've been working hard, and we're going to close with uh, a celebration song that they've prepared. They're ready? Everybody say Jesus.
his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Everybody said. Amen. Amen. 